Hey everyone, the name is Rector and today we're talking about the ENFP personality type and the point of this video is to truly show you how mood can influence your personality type. Like while a generic MBTI personality description will always say the ENFP is like this and tends to do that and often acts like this and tends to be described like that. I often emphasize a more dynamic version of the ENFP with multiple sides depending on their mood and personality. Today we're investigating the influence of flow on an ENFP as opposed to how stress or inspiration or challenge or stress relief will influence your personality. So while you as an ENFP is acting to gain relief from stress or to ease up expectations, on yourself, your personality is going to be very different from when you are embracing and taking on a challenge and going outside your comfort zone to achieve something that you previously have struggled with. Your behavior as well when you are in a state of flow and when you are at your best is going to be very different from your behavior when you are at your worst and when you are the most prone to doubt and to uncertainty. So today we're talking about four different kinds of ENFPs and what you want to ask yourself is what kind of ENFP am I right now at this moment? What am I feeling right now and how is this affecting me? So when you're in flow at your best as an ENFP, you pull on extroverted intuition and extroverted feeling, feeling perceiving and intuitive perceiving. Those are a core set of your personality and your flow functions. That's an integral part of my system of Neo Jungian typology. That means you are focused on opportunity, the future, on plans, and what's going to happen next. You're focused on uh, the predicting of patterns, the connecting of thoughts, the seeing and spotting of options and opportunities, the weighing of variables and possibilities, the exchange and the expression of yourself and your own personality, the revelation of your own personal truth and your own feelings. You're making decisions that you feel are right to you. You're being your natural, most real version of yourself. Beyond that, you're being democratic. You're open-minded. You express your emotions outwardly. You share your feelings with other people. and You involve other people in your life. You create and instill a sense of democracy around you. So you make everyone feel connected to one another. Now, when you feel the most strongly in flow, you can get, enter into this state of dominance. You can be so full of initiative and so focused on the opportunities you see and so sure of yourself and so confident and so passionate and so enthusiastic, you speed ahead beyond everyone else. And everyone else has no choice but to follow with you. You're like a force of nature. You're basically unstoppable. The system cannot control you. Nobody can tell you what to do. And in fact, if they try, you're more likely to do the opposite of what they say. You're a rebel. You're a person that will do whatever you feel is right. You'll go your own way. You'll be a character. You'll stand up for yourself and you'll say what you feel is right, no matter what anyone else has to say. And this is the ENFP and their most confident alpha state. That's how we can recognize the ENFP most, and this is the most generic version of the ENFP personality type, most well extensively covered in most MBTI personality descriptions. Now, the ENFP can also fall in the grip of stress, and this creates a completely different kind of ENFP, and it shows a completely different side of the ENFP, almost unrecognizable from the other. While one is very confident about the future and about their options and about what's next and about the chances and the potential of a new idea. This blue conscientious ENFP is more prone to melancholy and to second guessing and going back and forth between options. Should I pick this or should I pick that or should I go there or should I try that? This ENFP is a lot more restrained and a lot more cautious. They seek and they worry about consistency, like what if I do something I regret? What if there are consequences to my decisions? What if I say something and I, the system ends up lashing out against me? What if uh, I let my heart go too far and I end up getting myself hurt? What if I am too trusting, too innocent, too naive? 
This ENFP raises walls against the world and sets up more protective mechanisms. They want people to prove themselves and prove their worth before they can open up to other people. They want to know they can trust other people. So they're much more likely to engage in critical thinking and in a more pessimistic version of critical thinking, a more conscientious version. Here, what they are doing is uh, they are trying to understand and really get to know what's really going on inside of people. They want to know if people are really being authentic with them or if people really are telling them the truth. They want to, to confirm with the tribe and with the people around them, with the democracy and the family and everyone, that other people feel the same way they do. They want to make sure other people also see things the same way they do. And they want to know they have people with them and it's difficult for them when people are not. So in the state of stress, they're going and talking to people like, do you feel this? Are you sure you feel this way? Can I really trust that you feel that? And how do I know for sure? And what if I, what if you hurt me? And uh, how do I know you won't betray me? And how in this, there is something else. And this is from introverted sensing. And that's that. Am I crazy? And people people think I'm stupid for saying this. And well, people think I'm crazy for being so free-spirited and so open. Should I hold myself back or should I express myself openly? The This blue conscientious ENFP, this ENFP in stress is very, very different from this more red ENFP, this ENFP in flow. But there are two other ENFPs worth mentioning. And those are the ENFP in inspiration and the ENFP that is dealing with and pursuing relief from stress or anxiety. So as an ENFP, you can respond to challenge in one of two ways. If you feel that people are starting to expect something from you, if you start feeling like people or uh, the future or their vision or the, this idea about you is starting to control you too much, you can start to release yourself from expectations. You can start to make yokes and lighten up and crack up and be like, oh, no, I don't care and I don't need this and this is not important to me. This scene of people put on this, you know, fox uh, carelessness on to the world around them. They will project this idea that, oh, I don't care about people. I don't need others. I just need myself and I just, I will just go my own way. I'll be very independent. I'll... Uh, say and do whatever I feel and think and uh, instead of going into relationships and making an effort to connect with people and to uh, help the tribe and to help other people I'll be more careful and more cautious and more focused on what I need you know you can go into as an ENFP this uh, in between this tug of war between should I look at the needs of other people or should I focus on my own rational needs should I go into this mode of focusing on my career for a bit and building up my own life and my own happiness or should I open up to other people? So as your life progresses you'll probably switch a little bit back and forth between this. And what it all has to do with is relief. You're All you're looking for when you go into these phases, when you put on this little bit more icy personality outwards, when you become more cautious and distrustful of other people is you're trying to protect yourself you're trying to focus on yourself, you're trying to calm yourself down, maybe you're trying to recover after having been hurt or after having been through a difficulty. And you know, that's all fine and good, you know. Feel free to be in this state for as long as you want or as long as you need until you feel good again and until you feel ready to trust people again. This is just a part of life and getting back into things. Just make sure you don't get trapped in it. Just make sure you don't actually shoot down good opportunities because you want to stay realistic. Just make sure that you don't uh, put up too many walls around you and play too many games and ask too many questions and second guess people too much, making other people feel invalidated or pushing people away. Make sure that uh, you don't get caught in the, or get stuck in this uh, colder persona of yourself and that Eventually you find people that you can open up to and express yourself around because that's very important to if you ever want to get back into flow and if you ever want to get back into some energy and some motivation and some genuine uh, feelings again. Now, the final ENFP to talk about is the ENFP responding to inspiration or a challenge. 
you know, often the biggest challenge for the ENFP is, uh, you know, opening up to the tribe and to the group. You know, what if people come to expect things of you? What if there's uh, like this big idea in your life that could become huge and could have huge consequences to your future? What if there is like a bigger purpose to your life or some kind of vision or some kind of grand idea or scheme waiting for you to fin finish, to reach, to realize, to make happen? What if there is uh, inside yourself something important you need to listen to and confront in yourself? Some kind of insight into who you are, some kind of uh, interpersonal awareness and some kind of awareness to self that you missed. When the ENFP, ENFP responds to challenge, they go into introverted intuition, introverted feeling, feeling judging and intuitive judging. This can feel very much outside your comfort zone as an ENFP. It's almost as if you are diving down underwater. It can feel as if you are um, putting yourself under too much water. It can feel like you're drowning a little bit if you go too deep. It can feel like you're drowning a little bit. Then all the potential, all the consequences, all the future ramifications of this one idea or this one insight about yourself. So for an ENFP the question is are you ready to face that part of yourself? Are you ready to recognize and listen to yourself? Are you ready to sit down with yourself? Are you ready to uh, recognize like what your bigger future, your bigger vision, your bigger purpose is. Are you ready to accept this about yourself or will you remain on the run? So all these uh, states, they represent different cognitive functions and I'm of the strong belief that any personality type can use any cognitive function. The question is not how much you use them. The question is how they feel to your personality type. Now, obviously an INFJ feels naturally comfortable in the stage I just mentioned. And they don't even perceive it like we or like you do as an ENFP. Beyond that, an ISTJ, for example, has such joy and such energy and such motivation doing what the ENFP and stress is doing out of stress and in order to deal with and overcome stress. So what an ENFP is doing to overcome stress, to gain more stability in their life, to gain more control, to gain more discipline, the ISTJ is able to do with joy and motivation just naturally, just because that's how they are wired. So what this teaches us is respect and understanding that not just of ourselves but of other people. It's not as easy for other people to be like us as it is for us. That means it's not as easy for an ISTJ in your life to open up to all the ideas that you have or to uh, understand and not feel threatened and a bit scared and frightened by your personality and your strong personality and your uh, inability to go along with and to be controlled by other people or agreements that have been made. The ENFP and their personality is constantly in flux because they're going between all these different functions and ex all these different experiences, you know. And uh, often what I notice is like a lot of ENFPs will try to take on this challenge state and they'll try to go through this. And what, what always happens is when you go and do it, when you try to do it, you, you can put it on for a while, but what tends to happen is you tend to start feeling very, very vulnerable. Like, I associate this uh, growth state, this challenge state with vulnerability. Like, uh, you go into it and you try to embody it and you try to uh, live up to it and deal with it. But as you do, you also start feeling more and more vulnerable. Like, you start feeling more and more that maybe I'll fail people. Maybe I'll betray people's ideas of me. Maybe I won't succeed in this vision. Maybe it will all fall apart and I'll get distracted and it won't work out. And, you know, those stresses will keep on growing as you go deeper and deeper into this state. 
So that's why it's also important to learn to set healthy challenges for yourself, you know. It's okay to take on some challenges and to accept some parts and to confront some aspects of yourself. But it's okay to leave some things be as well for a little while. It's okay to leave some things for later and to take things a little bit as they come. Similarly, while it's completely okay to go into a state of relief and to go into extroverted sensing and sensing perceiving and extroverted thinking, thinking perceiving, to protect your heart from hurt and from bad relationships and from people that are trying to control you. It's necessary to recognize that this cannot be a healthy long-term mechanism. This is purely a coping mechanism and it will not bring long-term joy or flow. It will only get you this feeling of meh. This feeling of meh. Was that all there is? Is life all of this like when an ENFP is too much in this uh, relief state, uh, acting more childishly, like pursuing quick gratification, easy ideas and realistic options and uh, uh, shallow relationships that are a little bit more controlled and uh, play a little more games. They'll also feel like everything is kind of empty and pointless. Like, why am I hanging out with these people? Why do I do this? Why do I always have to deal with this? Like, at some point, it also starts getting a bit boring and pointless. The other thing worth recognizing is the state of stress. And uh, it's very important not to let your stress get the back, to, uh, let the, get the worst of you. And what I mean with this is, it's important that you don't start shooting down your own ideas and giving up on opportunities and it's important that it doesn't lead to giving up on relationships or uh, on yourself and your own personality and your own ideas and aspirations just because it's scary or difficult or just because it's safer not to you know some way at some point of time you're gonna have to go for it you know you can take years to second guess yourself and to go back and forth but one day you're just gonna have to go for it you know there will always be more to worry about later you know with worries the thing about worries is they can feed themselves constantly forever and ever like a chain there can be more worries on top of more worries on top of more worries and as soon as you deal with one worry there's always going to be another one and that's why stress can be so unhealthy. We can find ourselves living much of our life purely responding to stress and keeping stress from getting too much for us. We can constantly try to plan our life more and more and try to be more and more disciplined and try to, try to be more and more controlled. But at some point the question is when am I going to live and when am I going to let myself be happy and when am I just going to try and go for it and see what happens, you know. At some point you get to, you hit this level where you ask yourself, what kind of ENFP do I want to be? And that's the fundamental question every person should be asking themselves. What kind of a person do I want to be? What kind of ENFP do I want to be? And here is my answer to that question. You should seek to embrace the joys and the passions that you have in your life. But beyond that, you should set your aim to something higher than just yourself. Beyond just your own individual self-expression, you should be trying to make the world a better place and you should be trying to influence and engage in more humanitarian concerns uh, beyond your own self-absorption. And beyond that, you need to learn to de deal with your stressors in a healthy way. You know, when stressors come up, you have to recognize the stressors that need to be taken care of and the ones that don't. Like there are stressors and anxieties that you need to confront and manage and take care of and talk about openly. But there's also ones that you don't need to think about or worry about so much. And people don't always think or uh, feel the way you think they do. People aren't so focused on how you appear or how you look or how you talk or how perfect you are. People are not so judgmental as you might perceive them to be. And even if they are, it might not matter. It might be more important to be yourself and to do go your own way anyways. The other final answer I've thought of is uh, while it's important to sometimes get some relief and to have a laugh and to get some distance from your life and your motivations and your interests and to just realize that, yeah, 
I might fail and things might not work out the way I do and it will be okay even if I don't. It might be important to have this realization and to have this discovery to take off some pressure for your life. And I say this to myself as well because I have so much pressure on myself and to be uh, the kind of person I want to be and to achieve the kind of things I want to achieve. So there are times where you need to be able to let go and realize it in a bigger perspective with everything the world is and with the world and with the time and the future and everything. It's just, a, it's not that significant. It's not as big as you made it in your head. It's sure important and sure valuable and sure meaningful, but not as important as you might have made it in your own head. And that is, I believe, the key to happiness as I've found it so far. Let me know if I should clarify anything or if you have any questions about these subtypes or mindsets. Let me know if you relate more to the dominant ENFP, the challenge-oriented, steady ENFP, the more stress relief seeking, the more childish ENFP, or finally the more stress oriented and conscientious ENFP. And of course, if you like this video, leave a like, share and subscribe, and please visit my Patreon page, patreon.com slash if you want to support my work in any way. Thanks so much for watching and see you all in the next video.